Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. AIMS INICT, another one week ka time hai hamare paas. Let us do the revision of some of the most recent question papers. So today we'll take up the questions of November 2015 question paper. And a lot of repetitions happen once more in the upcoming exam in another one week. Very nice to see Megha Swana and many more. Thanks for joining, even if it is a little late evening. Uh, please inform all your friends. So can you please punch his voice loud and clear for all of you, doctor? Please do punch. Yes. Now. What is the structure that you are seeing, which can lead to lateral gaze palsy? So you know that lateral gaze palsy basically is uh, abdescence and in the cavernous sinus, how does the abdescence pass? So if you look at the boundaries of the cavernous sinus doctor, inferiorly it is the apex of the Petrous part of temporal bone, anteriorly the posterior wall of the orbit and superior orbital fissure, and posteriorly it is the clivus. And what are the contents? Typically, cavernous sinus has internal carotid abducens. Abducens enters the cavernous sinus, run along its lateral wall before it exits to the superior orbital fissure to ultimately innervate the lateral rectus, as all of you know very well. Similarly, oculomotor now, trochlear now, first division of trigeminal now, they all will be passing through the cavernous sinus. But the one which runs along the lateral wall is abscess. And sympathetic fibers of the carotid plexus also. So the examiner's question in the AIMS number 2015 is, Identify where in the wall you have the, in the cavernous sinus, you have the abducens is the question. So what is the neural supply of the superior oblique that is exiting the brainstem? So basically brainstem, ventral view, dorsal view, you need to be very clear, doctor. That is the item which is tested here. So you should know that you have an optic chiasma, midbrain, Pons medulla. So you can see the trigeminal seventh, eighth, they're all typically pons. Eighth is at the ponto medullary junction. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, they all come from the medulla. And uh, typically, this is the midbrain, pineal gland, thalami. And the cranial nerve 4 is the one which will be exiting through the dorsal brainstem is what you have to emphatically remember. Now, what is this muscle which is being marked, which lead to protrusion of the jaw? The protrusion of the jaw is the function of masseter is what you need to remember. Masseter is located at the side of the face and it lead to elevation of the mandible and the closing of the mouth when you are chewing and biting. It also causes the lower jaw to move forward, leading to protrusion. So masseter lead closes the mouth and protrudes the jaw is what you have to remember. So every time you go to the NEET PG INICT exam, doctor, very nice to see Anamika Sharma, Meghaswana, and many more who are all online. Um, you need to remember lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid, buccinator, masseter, they're all the sure shot questions in the exam. So, now, once more, the question is identify, identify the vagus nerve in this given cross sectional area diagram. 
So once more, you need to know vagus, carotid, internal jugular, they are all part of the carotid sheath. So that is the reason you need to remember. You have the internal jugular vein with a greater uh, diameter. And here you have the vagus nerve. And here the common carotid artery, they are all the part of the carotid sheath is what you need to remember. 37-year-old with hyperextension of the 4th and 5th metacarpophalangeal joint with the flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint. So what is this called? Boutonier deformity. So typically it is the uh, deep branch of the ulnar nerve which is responsible for innervating the muscles that control the 4th and 5th fingers. So any damage to this nerve will lead to their weakness that lead to metacarpophalangeal joint extension and flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint is what you need to remember. So the general rule of the game, which you should not forget, doctor, is uh, one question is going to come. Ulnar nerve, median nerve, radial nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, axillary nerve, sciatic nerve, common peroneal nerve, tibial nerve, Sural nerve, you need to be very sure, right? One question will come. Sure shot, every exam you go. So now, uh, which nerve supplies the ear lobule? Typically, it is the greater auricular nerve. It is the greater auricular nerve that supplies the ear lobule is what you need to remember. So the greater auricular nerve is the sensory branch of the cervical plexus. And it is the one which supplies the ear lobe and the skin or the angle of mandible. And the great auricular nerve arises from second and third cervical nerves. And it runs along the sternocleidomastoid muscle. See the whole face, doctor, is all supplied by trigeminal. But what is the exception? Only the skin overlying the angle of the mandible. It is being supplied by great auricular nerve is what you need to remember. Very good to see seven online classmates even at this late night. Can you please punch, doctor? Is the voice loud and clear? All of you, please. Uh, I'm a bit skeptic always because I'm broadcasting from the home. So remember, doctor, www.scoreapp.in. Okay. So in this, we uploaded most recent INICET exam paper discussions and PowerPoint also. So please uh, take every opportunity to visit. Uh, the scoreapp.in www.scoreapp.in uh, yeah So once more, uh, in the window, I am posting you, doctor, in the chat window, www.scoreapp.in. All the video library, all the PowerPoints which are there in the Score Learning app, Android and iOS app, are also made available for the web version. Web is bigger video, bigger uh, PowerPoint, and it is very easy to do revision. So today only, please go. Registered in this, and then we will give you 
access for all the INICT need PG program videos and PowerPoints. So doctor, um, if you look at the lesser occipital nerve, lesser occipital nerve supplies the skin of the scalp behind the ear. Facial nerve supplies facial muscles. Auriculotemporal is a branch of the mandibular nerve and it supplies the temporal area and the external ear is what you need to understand. Now, wood structure is not involved in the development of diaphragm. So somatic body wall, septum transfer, some pleuroperitoneal membrane, all of them are involved um, in the formation of the diaphragm is what you need to remember. So what is the immune privileged site? Seminiferous tubules are immune privileged. That means whenever we are in our embryonic life, all our tissues are exposed to our immune system so that it will recognize what is self and non-self. There are seminiferous tubules because of the blood testis barrier. They are called immune privileged site is what you need to remember doctor. So, yeah. Thank you for the feedback. Megaswana, very good. Anamika says, thinnest nerve. So you should know speciality, which is the longest nerve. Only nerve that comes from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Right? Most vulnerable to injury when there is a raised intracranial tension. All these funda we revised already in our earlier classes. Right? Which are all made available on www dot corab dot in today only go subscribe and then uh, uh, enjoy the video library powerpoint everything so after this class is over we remove this video we remove this powerpoint from the youtube and make it available tomorrow morning only on the uh, corab dot in where you can do the revision cranio vertebral joint what does it include it includes occipital condyle axis and atlas is what you need to remember, not the wings of sphenoid. In prunita arteries syndrome, it is the median nerve which become incarcerated while passing through the prunita arteries muscle which become compressed and that lead to pain, numbness and tingling of the wrist and hand, especially thumb, index and middle fingers. Maxillary bone does not articulate with sphenoid. It articulates with ethmoid, frontal, lacrimal, and uh, it does not articulate with sphenoid because sphenoid is located in the middle of the skull. See, skull base may middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa. That is the place where you have the sphenoid. It forms a part of the base of the skull. The orbits, nasal cavity is what you need to basically remember. Now, what is true about osteoblasts? They are derived from osteoprogenitor cells. They have neuropeptide receptors. There is what is called bone morphogenetic protein, BMP. BMP is the growth factor that plays a very important role leading to differentiation and functioning of the osteoblasts is what you have to remember. And they have neuropeptide receptors. They are derived from osteoprogenitor cells. But if you look at the osteoblast, they have a single smooth plasma membrane instead of multiple folds is what you have to remember. Wait one second, doctor. Now, which vessels do not supply the anal canal? So, to be very sure, above the pectinate, below the pectinate. 
So the anal canal is supplied by superior artery, middle retinal artery, inferior retinal artery. Superior retinal artery is the branch of the inferior mesenteric artery and supplies the upper part of the anal canal rectum and sigmoid. Middle retinal artery is the branch of internal iliac artery and supplies the middle part of anal canal. Inferior retinal artery is the branch of internal pudendal artery and supplies the lower part of the anal canal, perianal skin, external anal sphincter. There is median sacral artery arises from the aorta directly, descends along the anterior surface of sacrum. It supplies sacrum and coccyx, but it does not supply anal canal. Is what you have to remember, doctor. Buccinata is pierced by. It is pierced by the labial branch of the facial nerve, parotid duct, and molar mucus glands. Whereas the buccal branch of the mandibular nerve, it does not pierce the buccinator. It is the sensory supply that supplies the skin overlying the buccinator muscle. It does not pass through the muscle, is what you need to remember. With regard to the otic ganglion, otic ganglion is inferior to foramen nobe. It is lateral to tensor villi palatini. It is anterior to middle meningeal artery. So, otic ganglion, pterygopalatine ganglion, gesserian ganglion, ciliary ganglion. Oh my God! One ganglion, jaru raiga. Kal ke INI CT exam. So, doctor, coming to physiology, you are seeing the basal electrical rhythm of intestine. What is true about it? The tone of contraction is related to frequency. Frequency of contraction is 6 per minute. Threshold of contraction is minus 50 millivolts. So, tone of contraction is related to frequency of stimulation, not the amplitude. That is very important point that you need to remember. Now, what is this graph where the volume of lung has decreased? It is a restrictive lung disease, which is like interstitial lung disease. Whereas bronchial asthma and emphysema are obstructive lung diseases is what you need to remember. So this is one table, doctor. You have to be very, very clear. So if you look at the restrictive lung disease, there's a reduced lung volume, total lung capacity is reduced, vital capacity reduced. Whereas obstructive lung disease, residual volume, functional residual capacity and lung volume are increased because there is a air trapping inside the lung if it is obstructive lung disease. Air flow limitation is a feature of obstruction. Lung compliance is reduced in restriction. Forced expiratory volume is decreased in obstruction. Forced vital capacity significantly reduced in restrictive and peak expiratory flow rate is normal in restrictive. FEV1 by FVC ratio normal in restrictive. This is what like a parrot you need to remember the spirometric differences between restrictive and obstructive lung disease. Sure, short. One question is going to come tomorrow. INICT exam. You will remember me in exam hall, right? Now, this is a super, super, super duper question, doctor. Fundamentally, you should know what is the formula for ejection fraction. Second challenge, you should know where is the end of the systole, where is the end of the diastole. If you know that, you will solve this. Now, let us solve this step by step. Ejection fraction is equal to stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume into 100. How do you get stroke volume? End diastolic volume minus end systolic volume is stroke volume. So typically this is the point in the curve which is called the end diastolic volume. This is the point in the curve which is called the end systolic volume. So between the two what do you have? Stroke volume. So, in the given graph, 130 was the value of, 130 was the value of 
एंडिस्टोलिक फिफ्टी इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एंड सिस्टोलिक तो क्या हो गया अभी बच्चों वन थर्टी माइनस फिफ्टी हो गया डिवाइडेड बाई एंडिक वॉल्यूम विच इज वन थर्टी दिस इज एंडिक वॉल्यूम दिस इज एंडिक वॉल्यूम दिस इज एंड सिस्टोलिक वॉल्यूम सो एंडिक वॉल्यूम माइनस एंड सिस्टोलिक वॉल्यूम डिवाइडेड बाई एंडिक वॉल्यूम इन टू हंड्रेड विल गिव यू दिजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन अभी वन थर्टी माइनस फिफ्टी कितना हो गया काटने के बाद एटी हो गया एटी बाई वन थर्टी इन टू हंड्रेड हो गया उसका मतलब है एट थाउजेंड बाई वन थर्टी हो गया जीरो जीरो काट गया थर्टी कितना हो गया सिक्सटी हो गया सो दर इज सिक्सटी इज दी आंसर ओके नाउ सोडियम आयोडीन सिंपोट इज देर इन प्लासेंटा पेरोटेड थाइरॉइड बट नॉट इन पिचुट्री ग्लैंड Interstitial fluid volume is decided by radioactive sodium and radioactive label albumin are the two things which are used to measure. All right. So ICF, ECF, interstitial fluid. So these are all the questions. Sure shot in the exam, doctor. Now, if you look at the latent period of a muscle twitch, is ten millisecond. Contraction time is forty millisecond. Relaxation time is fifty millisecond. What is the tetanizing frequency? If you know the formula, you will answer. If you don't know, you will not answer. So, doctor, what is total time? Total time is latent period plus contraction time plus relaxation time. इधर कितना हो गया? Ten plus forty plus fifty is equal to hundred millisecond. And tetanic frequency is one by total. Time in milliseconds by thousand, so hundred by thousand. That is equal to one by point one. Is equal to ten hertz. Is the answer. Formula मालूम होना है. उसमें कुछ भी इंटेलिजेंस की मामला ही नहीं है. All right. So doctor, please take every opportunity today to go to scorab dot in. I'm typing into the chat window. subscribe yourself and uh, you have almost 7000 videos in the neat pg section 4 minute 5 minute videos along with powerpoints which we already have in school learning app also in inicet you are having all the 22 years 8800 question bank topic wise up to 2000 to 2015 2015 to 22 we are discussing paper wise and made it all available isko master karo 8800 ko automatically seat aayega theek hai so be very sure about it doctor so please take every opportunity to subscribe today and share it with all your friends to also subscribe scorab dot now These are all the actions of a N P atrial natriuretic peptide. So atrial natriuretic peptide is produced by whom? Atria. When do they produce? When are the atria is stretched because of too much of volume inside it, fluid. And what will that do? It lead to afferent arterial dilatation. It lead to mesangial constriction. Is wrong. ANP does not cause mesangial constriction. It decreases sodium absorption in proximal convoluted tubules, so that sodium will go into urine. It leads to natriuresis. It inhibits sodium reabsorption even in medullary collecting duct. There are all the true statements about the atrial natriuretic peptide. Is what you need to remember. The extracellular potassium concentration is hundred. Intracellular concentration is ten. What is the Nernst equation? Or एक बार हमको chemistry physics याद आ गया. So Nernst equation you need to know, doctor. You apply the formula, you will get minus sixty volts. So uh, that will be the answer. In the formula of urea clearance. C is equal to U into V by P. What does U stands for? Urinary concentration in milligram per ml. 
So C is the urea clearance. U is the urinary concentration of urea in milligram per ml. V is the urine volume per unit of time in milliliters per minute. Which method is used to calculate the anatomical dead space, doctor? It is a single breath nitrogen test, which is used to calculate the anatomical dead space is what you have to remember, doctor. Now, biochemistry. It is not a cofactor of glycogen phosphorylase. So, calmodulin, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A, they are all the cofactors of glycogen phosphorylase. Glycogenin is not a cofactor. Glycogen phosphorylase breaks down the glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate. Calmodulin, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A, they all regulate this very crucial enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase. Whereas glycogenin is the one which is involved in glycogen synthesis, not glycogenolysis is what you have to remember, doctor. After a point mutation, glutamic acid is replaced by valine that lead to sickle cell anemia. The mobility of sickle hemoglobin compared with normal hemoglobin, how will it be? It will be typically decreased, is what you need to remember. So whenever there is any point mutation, glutamic acid is replaced by valine that lead to sickle hemoglobin. The mobility of this is decreased. Why? Because valine is non-polar. Non-polar. It is hydrophobic. Whereas glutamic acid is acidic. Polar amino acid. That is what you need to understand. Thiamine is a cofactor for alpha ketoglutarol dehydrogenase, branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase, pyruvate dehydrogenase, all the dehydrogenases. So alpha ketoglutarate, branch chain, pyruvate for all this, it is. Whereas succinate dehydrogenase is the dehydrogenase. But it does not require thiamine as a cofactor. What does it require? It requires FAD as a cofactor, is what you need to remember. Dr. Biochemistry, hum dil laga ke padai kiya. All those videos are made available on the scorap.in and score learning app. Right? So take today only opportunity. Cofactor of vitamin B12. Is needed to convert methanyl, methyl melonyl CoA to succinyl CoA. If it is not there, methyl melonic acid urea will occur, is what you need to remember. Glycogen synthesis and breakdown have enzymes necessary for both the pathways. But why the glucose 6-phosphate freshly synthesized during glycogenesis? in the cytoplasm of hepatocytes is not immediately degraded because, because God has planned very well. Glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, they both are regulatory processes. Same steps are involved, one forward direction, one reverse direction. But the main point is the glucose 6-phosphatase, which is the final step of glycogenolysis, Converting glucose 6 phosphate to glucose is there in the endoplasmic reticulum. That's a compartmental difference between glycogen synthesis and glycogenolysis. Right? So that's the reason it won't waste. For example, in cytoplasm, every time, in cytoplasm, every time when the glycogen is produced. If the glycogen phosphorylase is in cytoplasm only instead of in endoplasmic reticulum, then all that formed glycogen become broken down. It's a futile cycle that is prevented because glycogen phosphorylase is located, glucose 6 phosphatase is located in endoplasmic reticulum, is what you need to remember. Once more, doctor. Porphyria, favorite topic for the INICET exam. Ratta maro, batti maro. Active recall, spaced repetition. You need to do, doctor. There is no other way. 
no teacher can drive you to remember doctor let me tell you any good teacher can only hold your hand and tell dekho bachcho ye acha topic hai ye important topic hai isko ignore karo kuch bhi nahi hoga wahan tak le ja sakte magar usko revision karna yaad rakhna reproduce karna picture ka success kiske hath mein hai aapke hath mein hai doctor so that's the reason be careful be conscious whenever you are preparing right so doctor in lead poisoning there is an inhibition of which important enzyme i mean uh, different enzymes in heme synthesis then what substance get accumulated delta amino levulanic acid so in lead poisoning there is an accumulation of ala in the blood lead poisoning interferes with the heme synthesis mainly what are the two enzymes lead inhibits ferrochelatase and ala dehydratase please don't forget ferrochelatase ala dehydratase many times we discussed this kal ke inact mein porphyria nahi aaye to mera naam murli bharadwaj nahi hai now what are the sites of heme synthesis doctor so hepatocytes osteocytes bone marrow not rbc come on heme synthesis require mitochondria where are mitochondria in rbc doctor it is not there na now what is the codon for selenocysteine uga for selenocysteine selenocysteine is also called 21st amino acid like you are all 21st century millennial kids like that so it has uh selenium cysteine insertion sequence in mrna so uga uga typically serves as a stop codon in the genetic code but the presence of selenium cysteine insertion sequence allows the incorporation of the selenium cysteine instead of terminating the translation now these are all the substances which are glucogenic acetyl coa is not glucogenic acetyl coa lead to formation of ketone bodies how can it form glucosic cup so accordingly ketogenic amino acids glucogenic amino acids purely ketogenic amino acid all that list one question definitely aayega kal ke neat pe chal gaya so which conversion does not require biotin doctor biotin is required for carboxylation acetyl coa the two carbon acetyl coa becoming three carbon melonyl coa three carbon propionyl coa becoming four carbon methyl melonyl coa pyruvate to become oxaloacetate for all that you require biotin but gamma carboxylation of glutamate is special it does not require biotin but rather it requires vitamin k is what you need to remember which is not a technique for the protein precipitation trichloroacetic acid heat precipitation isoelectric method they are all involved but titration with reducing sugar is not a method for protein precipitation instead it is involved in mylod reaction which is non enzymatic browning reaction the tucker between reducing sugars and amino acids of the proteins they titration with reducing sugar is involved but one chromatography technique is a favorite area dirty topic that we need to remember for the tomorrow's exam doctor can the online students can punch is the voice loud and clear now doctor so what is this microscopic appearance in schwannoma what is this area with arrow it is antony b pattern with verroque body verroque bodies are typically seen in antony a pattern not in b pattern a is spindle shaped schwann cells arranged in a organized parallel fashion and that lead to formation of verroque body these verroque bodies have two parallel rows of nuclei 
separated by a dense fibrillary region formed by the alignment of the Schwann cell process. 12-year-old boy, enlargement of bilateral cervical lymph nodes. Biopsy is being shown to you. So what are you seeing in that? It is a Hodgkin's lymphoma, Epstein-Barr virus, Reed Steinberg cell is what you should remember. So what is this nutmeg pattern of the liver biopsy? In nutmeg pattern, what do you find? Typically dark areas of perivenular dead hepatocytes with the gray areas of periportal viable hepatocytes together will lead to the nutmeg appearance is what you need to remember. Can the online students can punch? Is the voice loud and clear? Very good. Thank you, Megha Swina, for the feedback. So when I broadcast from the home, always there is a kevich and some kind of a reassurance needed. So what are all the conditions where you find nutmeg liver? Whenever chronic passive congestion of liver. Passive congestion of liver. Right-sided heart failure, constructive pericarditis. In all these conditions, we find nutmeg liver. 30 year old male, presence with a history of heartburn, upper GI endoscopy was done, and a suspicious lesion. What is this? Barrett's esophagus. So, in Barrett's esophagus, you have mucin stain. So, mucin stain is a histological stain where mucin producing goblet cells in the columnar epithelium will turn positive. So whenever goblet cells in esophagus are there, it is characteristic picture of Barrett. So Barrett may, Alcyon blue and periodic acid shift are the two important stains which are being used to identify the mucin in the goblet cells. So what is the checkpoint, doctor? Checkpoint in the cell cycle, which is the primary point in regulation of cell growth. So please remember, the primary point of regulation of cell growth is at the end of G1 phase. G1, G1. At G1 checkpoint, the cell decides whether to proceed through cell cycle and divide or exit the cycle and enter a non-dividing state of G0 is what you have to remember. So G1 checkpoint is the most important deciding factor is what you need to remember for the tomorrow's exam. So once more, doctor, all these uh, CDK, Cell cycle, cell cycle inhibitor, cell cycle specific, cell cycle non-specific among the cancer drugs. All those items you have to master, doctor, for the tomorrow's exam. Very nice to see Altman and many more who are all online. Excellent, doctor. So what is this? All of you have used it. This is bone marrow biopsy needle. One needle, mengini needle. Bone marrow biopsy needle. One needle, one suture. One suturing technique. They are all favorite areas for the need PG examiner. What is a non-specific regulator of the iron metabolism, doctor? Hepcidin. Hepcidin is the most important non-specific regulator of iron metabolism. So what does hepcidin do? It is produced by liver. It regulates iron absorption and distribution of iron in the body. It binds with ferroportin. And where is ferroportin? Ferroportin is that protein that exports the iron from the cells, causing its internalization. It, it binds with ferroportin. It gets internalized, degraded, and thereby reducing the iron release into the circulation. So that is the story of ferroportin. Then what is DMT1? DMT1 is the transmembrane protein that causes the uptake of the iron from the gut. And it is not a regulator of iron metabolism is fortunate to remember. What are the most important prognostic factor in ALL, doctor? Response to steroids is the most important factor, doctor. So once more, summarize. Summarize all the um, differences, age, children have better prognosis than adults. 
low initial leukocyte count good hyper diploidy more than 50 chromosomes good presence of favorable genetic alteration like t1221 or hyper diploidy whereas t922 or t1411 bad prognosis good response to initial chemotherapy especially steroids is good do not a good do if it is not poor response not a good do minimal residual disease after induction therapy, good do. MRD po positivity, bad. T cell lineage, bad. Non T cell lineage, good. Extra medullary disease, bad. Why this? Kolavari, kolavari, kolavari. You need to be very sure on this classification, doctor. In genomic imprinting, how is DNA modified? DNA is modified by methylation is what you need to remember. DNA is modified by methylation. So what is genomic imprinting? It is an epigenetic modification where there is a differential expression of alleles depending on papa se aaya ya mamma se aaya. During gametogenesis, certain areas of the DNA known as imprinting control areas are marked by with uh, methyl groups on one of the parental chromosome that will lead to silencing of the allele in the offspring that inherited that methylated allele from that parent. And the pattern of this DNA methylation is heritable. Silencing phenomena is there, no? It is heritable. And that lead to Beckwith, Weedman and Angelman. So similarly, what are the other types of DNA modifications that affect the gene expression of the DNA? Acetylation, phosphorylation, deamination is what you need to remember. Clear, doctor? Now, once more, go through the PowerPoint and the video that we'll be uploading into scorap.in. Today only subscribe to scorap.in. About intraoperative histopathological analysis. What is except? It won't give immediate diagnosis always. It is used for detecting positive margins used to confirm suspected METs. Sentinel lymph node biopsy in breast carcinoma is an example of intraoperative histopathological analysis. Some gram-negative bacteria, they produce an enzyme that prevent beta-lactam antibiotics so what is the site of penicillin G? It is the beta-lactam ring is what you need to identify. A guinea pig is being dissected. A substance X is injected. Intestinal peristalsis slowed down. What is that substance, doctor? Whenever we are angry, we don't feel hungry. When you are angry, you don't feel hungry. When you are angry, epinephrine is produced. Epinephrine will decrease the peristalsis is what you need to remember. And this effect on GI motility, where it decreases the peristalsis and the coordinated contraction and relaxation of muscles is all because of the epinephrine's action on alpha adrenergic receptors on the smooth muscle of the GIT is what you need to remember that. What drugs prescribed by registered medical practitioners mostly fall under, they all fall under H. Which drug is calcineurin inhibitor, doctor? Cyclosporin is the calcineurin inhibitor. Once more, doctor. Immunosuppressant drugs. Immunosuppressive therapy. Suppressant drugs. One sure shot MCQ. Manlo, Ginlo. So calcineurin inhibitors inhibit the activity of calcineurin, which is involved in T cell activation and proliferation. So cyclosporin binds to cyclophilins, which are a group of intracellular proteins and inhibit calcineurin activity that decrease the T cell activation, decrease the cytokine production by that immunosuppression is achieved. Whereas azathioprine converted to 6-mercaptopurine interferes with DNA RNA synthesis. That's how it acts like immunosuppressant. Mycophenolate mofetil is an inhibitor of inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase, which is involved in purine synthesis. So 
So all this immunosuppression, kadak, kadak, Raina, doctor, no compromise. One question, sure shot, I got examiner. And you have to be ready. Last moment. Garma, garam, ready, hoke, jana, exam. Will you promise me? Cracking INICT is very easy, doctor. If you solve 8,800 MCQs, go through the discussions of the past 22 question papers on the scoreapp.in and score learning app. More than enough, automatically you will do it. But do you have that much patience, energy, time, tolerance, retention, attention to go through all the 8,800 questions? Bhagavan Rakshakare. God save the queen. Willpower doctor, why I can't do? If you think, then you can do. And you have Dr. Murali Bharadwaj, your classmate, roommate, table mate, bench mate, to give you company until you get the seat. I am there with you. So, doctor, be very sure on the entire list of his calcineurin inhibitors. So, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, calcineurin inhibitors. Then, what are antimetabolites? Methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenolate, moftail. Methotrexate inhibits dihydrofolate reductase. Then glucocorticoids inhibit cytokine production, reduce inflammation, prednisolone, dexamethasone. Then mTOR inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors are the next group of immunosuppressants. Mammalian target of rapamycin is the name of mTOR that is involved in cell growth and proliferation and mTOR inhibitors are immunosuppressants. Cyrolimus, Everolimus, Cyrolimus is also called rapamycin. It binds with FK binding protein and inhibits mTOR activity. Some monoclonal antibodies are used as immunosuppressants. Rituximab, it targets B cells and used in treatment of certain lymphomas. Infliximab, it is tumor necrosis factor alpha targets and used in inflammatory bubble disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Basiliximab, it targets IL-2 receptor on T-cells and used in prophylaxis of organ rejection. So these are the immunosuppressants. You need to be very sure when you go for the tomorrow's exam, doctor. Which is anti-fibrinolytic. Epsilon amino caproic acid. Once more, what is the rule of the game, doctor? Thrombolytics. Anti-thrombotics. Antiplatelets, fibrinolytics, totally a list of 20 drugs you need to master. Compulsory one question, naya aito my murli baradwaj nai. At low infusion rate, what will dopamine will do? It increases the renal blood flow. So low dose, moderate dose, high dose, how do you define? 0 0.5 to 2, low dose. 2 to 10, moderate dose, more than 10, high dose is what you need to remember. Platelet aggregation, how aspirin will block it? By blocking thromboxane A2. See, two questions came. Then phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4 clinical trials. Phase 1 is for drug safety. So please don't forget this list, doctor. A list ko yaad rakna jarur aega kal ke neat PGINICT. Phase 1, it evaluates safety, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. Where will you use on healthy volunteers or patients with target disease? Usually less than 100, several months, open label dose escalation. Phase 2, evaluate efficacy, safety. Phase 3, evaluate efficacy, safety in larger population. Phase 4, post-marketing surveillance. Phase 2, 100 to 500. 3 is 500 to 5,000. Phase 4 is post-marketing surveillance is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, which drug acts on dilator pupillae and action similar to that of pilocarpin on sphincter pupillae? Whatever. So, you should know. Pilocarpin 
Phylocarpin is cholinomimetic, sphincter pupillae, it leads to meiosis. Similarly, epinephrine, the drug, uh, acts on dilator pupillae and lead to pupillary dilatation. But at low doses, epinephrine can stimulate beta receptors on the ciliary muscle, causing accommodation and meiosis. That's the point you need to appreciate. So two actions of epinephrine. Typically, epinephrine stimulate alpha adrenergic receptors in the dilator of the iris and cause contraction and midriasis. But at low dose, it acts on ciliary muscle and it can lead to meiosis and uh, um, accommodation. Is what you need to remember. Which drug does not affect DNA synthesis, doctor? Linezolid does not. Rifampicin, nitrofilentoin, metronidazole. So all these antibiotic classes, what is their mechanism of action? Pakka nevala question, hey doctor. You have to be very sure. So linezolid, linezolid does not affect DNA synthesis. Linezolid inhibits bacterial Protein synthesis by inhibiting 50S subunit of bactyl ribosome. Rifampicin inhibits DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. RN Nitrofurantoin damages the bacterial DNA. Metronidazole produces free radicals that damage the bacterial DNA. So you should know all these classes, Dr. Beta-lactams, penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems. They typically inhibit peptidoglycan synthesis. Macrolides. They inhibit 50S, erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin, but they can prolong QT. Aminoglycosides, 30S. Tetracycline, 30S. Quinolones, they inhibit topoisomerase 4, topoisomerase 4. And gyrase is what you need to remember. Sulfonamides compete with PABA. Glycopeptides. They bind to the D ala ala terminus of the peptidoglycan precursor. Oxazolidin dions, they bind with 50S subunit of bactyl ribosome. Lipopeptides, they act on the lipids like daptomycin, telavinicin, but they can lead to myopathy and nephrotoxicity. Polymyxins, they disrupt the bacterial cell membrane. So, all these things, doctor, like a parrot. You should be ready. This PowerPoint, this video, everything is made available on scorap.in and also in the score learning app. Today only take opportunity to do the revision, doctor. Right? So I leave the literature, folate antagonists, nitrofurans, anastomycins, carboseponyms, cyclic lipopeptides, etc. etc. What is their mechanism? So, what do you mean by Low volume distribution. You need to be very sure. Volume of distribution means once you push a drug into the plasma, if it is having a high lipid solubility, it will move out of plasma and bind with the surrounding tissues. Then you call high volume of distribution. But it remains in plasma without going out into the tissues does not accumulate in tissues, then you call low volume of distribution. So for which drug you need to give loading dose? Loading dose should be given to those drugs which have a high volume of distribution. The moment you are giving the drug, it is leaving the plasma and binding with outside tissue. They have to achieve the desired concentration in plasma, you need to give a Loading dose is what you need to remember. Which drug is not used in the treatment of bird flu? We give aziltamivir, genamamir, peramivir, but not rebavarin. While giving biphosphonates, biphosphonates, elendronate. So it can lead to reflux esophagitis, esophageal ulcers. So it needs to be given with a glass of water and ask the patient to be in the erect position is what you need to remember. It should be given on empty stomach.
for the appropriate um, uh, absorption of which drug is affected by fatty meal, very popular. Grisoful, when fatty meal, it is increased. Steroids have a role in multiple myeloma, Hodgkin's lymphoma. In fact, lymphomas melt like snow. Melt, lymphomas melt like snow if you give steroid. That is the rule which you need to remember. Not in Kaposi's sarcoma. Which anticonvulsant lead to visual field become contracted, Dr. Vigabathrin, V for visual, V for Vigabathrin, contraction of the visual field is what you need to remember. So everything, anything about the anti-epileptics, tips me rena, doctor, tips me rena, right? So um, let's talk about it quickly. Carbamazepine is a sodium channel blocker. Valproate is a broad spectrum anti-epileptic. Lamotrigine, sodium channel blocker. And epilepsy, trigeminal neuralgia, bipolar disorder, you can use carbamazepine. Migraine prophylaxis, you can use valproate. Bipolar disease, you can also use lamotrigine. But lamotrigine, typically, history of rash, hypersensitivity, you need to be careful. Valproate enhances GABA, inhibit voltage-gated sodium channels and T-type calcium channels. Levetiracetam, it binds with the synaptic vesicle protein 2A, reducing neurotransmitter release. Phenytoin, it blocks voltage-gated sodium channel, but nystagmus, ataxia, gum hyperplasia, hirsutism, gabapentin, typically alpha to delta subunit of the voltage-gated calcium channel, reducing the calcium influx, that is gabapentin. Topiramate, it blocks the voltage-gated sodium channel, increase the GABA activity, inhibit the glutamate receptor, very important, topiramate, kidney stones, topiramate, kidney stones, topiramate, kidney stones, don't forget. Topiramate can also be used for migraine prophylaxis. Pitosuximide, it blocks T-type calcium channels, just like the valproate. That's the reason, typically, uh, Pitosuximide is also used in absent seizures. Is what you need to remember. Similarly, Vigabathrin, GABA transaminase inhibitor. Then, Lacosamide, sodium channel blocker. Eslicarbazepine acetate, sodium channel blocker. Brivaracetam, it is a miscellaneous anti-epileptic. It binds synaptic recycle protein 2A. So what are the first drug of choice? Favorite question of the examiner doctor. GDCS, valproate, absent seizures, cetosuximide, myoclonic seizures, valproate, focal seizures, carbamazepine, lamotrigine, levetiristam, and oxycarbazepine. Infantile spasms, you give ACTH. And Vigabathrin, even though Vigabathrin is notorious for causing visual deterioration, first you will try with ACTH for infantile spasms. If they are not resolving, then Vigabathrin, which is a gender specific side effect of valproate. Typically, PCOD occur only in females, and valproate lead to PCOD. Etanercept is a disease modifying agent. How does Etanercept act? TNF alpha. Inhibitor. So, what are all the various TNF alpha inhibitors that you know? Rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriasis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, everything, doctor. And etanercept is a demand disease modifying anti rheumatic agent, is what you need to remember. Now, which drug is not used to detoxification of chronic alcoholics? We use disulfiram, acamprosate, and naltrexone. So these are all the points that you need to remember. Abhi agaya, favorite area of examiner. Chodega nahi. What is this? What is this? What is this cyst? What is this tool? You need to be very sure. It is the food contaminated with the egg of the larvae. 
So you should know how to recognize Ascaris lumbricoides, unfertilized Ascaris lumbricoids, Fasciola hepatica, Hymenolemis diminuta, Hookworm, Paragonimus vestimoniae, Enterobius vermicularis, Cystosoma mansoni, Japonicum, Hematobium, which has a lateral spine, which has a terminal spine. Oh my God, microbiology, frustrating substance, subject. But we have to master, we should know what examiner want. We need to master what examiner want. And I will only teach you, I will only revise you what examiner want. Not one cent more, one cent less. That's my promise to all of you. I know you want to read less, you want to get a good seat. That is dream of everybody now, even when we are students. What is the purpose of coaching? Coaching is not to worsen your burden of learning. The purpose of coaching is to simplify, shorten, condense, make you read little and get a very, very good rank, doctor. Come on, let's study together every day. So remember, bile stain X, bile stain X. So this is one favorite question. What are bile stain? What are salt saturated? So, Fasciola, Clonorchi, Schistosoma, Paragonimus, Bile Stain, Ascaris, Tituris, Ankylostoma, Nicator, Tinea, Diphilobothrum, Salt, Saturated, Roundworm, Ascaris, Whipworm, Trituris, Hookworm, Ankylostoma, Hookworm, Nicator, Tinea, Tapeworm, Diphilo, Fish Tapeworm, Paragonimus, Lung Fluke, Schistosoma, Blood Fluke, Corner kiss, liver fluke, fasciola, liver fluke. Oh God, these worms and flukes. You need to be very, very, very sure about it, doctor. Now, 35 year old farmer, multiple cervical sinuses. You should smell the diagnosis that it is actinomycosis. So typically, actinomycosis is something uh, that is acid fast. Right? So, one question on either nocardia or madura mycosis or actinomycosis. Without that, there is no question paper. Supreme Court judgment. Now, doctor, nasal biopsy, brain abscess. Right? So, what is this organism and what is the stain used? So, it is nocardia gram stain. So, in gram staining, um, Actinomycosis versus nocardia, differentiated, differences, you need to be very sure. So genital ulcer smear is being prepared. So it is a classical trichomonas vaginalis, mainly through sexual contact, vaginal discharge, itching will be there. And urethral secretions under microscope, you can also do not, 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 not. Nucleic acid amplification test and sexual partners should also be treated in trichomonas. 24 year old female presented with ulcer in genital area, gene sustain is being shown. So it is Calimetobacter donovani, Calimetobacter granulometasis. You need to be very sure, is a gram negative bacterium that leads to granuloma inguinal, genital ulcer. So Sure shot, doctor. Every INS 18 8 PG you go. One question on one of the STDs. I got LGBT. I got trichomonas. I got bacterial vaginosis. I got herpes simplex virus, herpes joster, syphilis, granuloma inguinal. Right? And then uh, all these things. You have to be 100% sure, doctor. Now, what is this India ink staining finish? Definitely one helminth will come and sit in your screen in the tomorrow's exam, doctor. You have to be very sure about. So, very good to see eight online classmates at this late hour. So, please don't forget to be part of the scorab.in. So, what is this? Helminth is the question.
So it is Brugia Malayi. Brugia Malayi, microphyllary are unsheathed. The rest, Onchocerca, Lova Lova, Vicaria, Bankrupti, they are all microphyllia which are sheathed. That is the difference. There's a progressive dyspnea, chest X ray shows cavity lesion. The histopathological examination is being revealed. What is the most likely cause? A number of layers that can be seen in the wall of the parasite. So it is echinococcus, which will have two layers, is what you need to remember. So echinococcus is the tape form that lead to cystic echinococcosis. And uh, typically that cystic structure, there is a thick laminated outer layer, inner cellular germinal layer, is what you need to remember. Now, once more examiner will give you the parasitology and ask you to identify plasmodium vivax. So ring form, mature ring form, trophozoite, mature schizont, male gametocyte, trophozoite, early schizont. Whereas here you can see banana shaped gametocyte is a feature of plasmodium falciparum. You need to know all the differences between them. So vivax, ring, typically difference. Trophozoid, you can see the difference. Mature trophozoid, you can see difference. Schizont, you can see difference. And gametocyte, banana shape, these falciparum. So please make a point, doctor. One malaria, when you are in this endemic country called India, huge short question. A patient comes to your clinic with complaint of multiple episodes of loose watery stools. You discover that these Episode start after he has taken shellfish in a local restaurant. What is the common cause, doctor? Adults may. Viral diarrhea, most commonly, is norovirus, which is highly contagious through contaminated food and water, is what you need to remember. So that brings, doctor, to the end of... Uh, the story. So tomorrow, jara jaldi shuru karenge, subha subha shuru karenge, aur mile milke padai karenge. So today is 29th, 31st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, oh, 7 days is there. 7 days may I promise as many questions as we can discuss of the recent papers, we will try to finish. All 2000 to 2014 are all made available, doctor. Right? Very good. Megaswana says, in French rotavirus, adults norovirus. But yeah. Right? Thank you very much. Don't forget, scorap.in. Please tell to all your friends to download and uh, uh, prepare for exam. Every day I will be available. My promise to you. Right? I will study like a student, your classmate, along with you. Tension kuch bhi nahi hai. Jab bhi tension hai to mujhe ping karo. Mera phone number aapke paas, sabke paas hai, WhatsApp mein. Huh? Then I'll be there to discuss, help with you. Specific needs, if you have anything, please let me know. So nice to see Saraswati, Kadam and everybody. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Enjoy a great dream that you are joining. Ansari Nagar, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi is your next destination. Right? Thank you.